We have recently seen a significant increase in cases of COVID-19, some of which are unlinked and thus indicate community transmission. Health officials are now urging restaurants, bars and more to shut their doors as the city grapples with the spread of the coronavirus. We'll get to the situation here in Toronto in a moment. First, let's look at the province. There are now 177 cases of the coronavirus. If you're asking me, is today better than yesterday? The answer is yes. Some badly needed good news today in Ontario's battle against COVID-19, where things are getting better and what still needs to be done. Global News starts now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Alan Carter. And I'm Farah Nasser. Here is the very latest on the COVID-19 pandemic. CTV News with Michelle Dubay and Nathan Downer. Good evening. Its global impact continues to grow by the day. The coronavirus and the preparation and prevention efforts around the world. Governments, companies and citizens responding to each development while health officials work to keep things in context. Le vendredi 15 mai au téléjournal ce soir. We got into this together. We're going to get out of it together. L'Ontario prépare son déconfinement alors que la tendance de cas est toujours à la baisse. Doc Ford appelle au respect des consignes. Pour une municipalité de 24 000, c'est, c'est, euh, c'est certainement une urgence. À bout de souffle, les municipalités ontariennes exigent une aide d'urgence rapide des gouvernements ontariens et fédéral. Nous allons nous assurer que euh, la COVID-19 euh, ne se répande pas à l'intérieur de nos forces armées. Et cinq militaires déployés dans des centres de soins de longue durée infectés par la COVID-19 en Ontario et au Québec. Bon vendredi à tous. J'espère que vous avez passé une bonne semaine. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue au téléjournal. À la veille du long week-end, Doug Ford appelle les Ontariens à la prudence. Le premier ministre explique que les directives de distanciation sociale demeurent importantes, même si la propagation du coronavirus semble ralentir. Alors, Mathieu, le gouvernement en fait craint qu'avec le début du déconfinement, la population soit moins disciplinée. Tonight on City News. The mourning for the victims of the plane crash that went down in Iran continues. They're never going to come back to me. I'm never going to be able to hold my niece again. I'm never going to be able to hold my sister again. Tonight, another family member shares his grief and anger along with the plans to help remember his sister, brother-in-law and one-year-old niece. More job action in the classroom. Ontario's Catholic teachers will be implementing a province-wide one day full withdrawal of services on Tuesday, January 21st. For the first time in more than 20 years, Catholic school teachers are engaging in a one day province wide strike while more than half a million students will be out of the class. Hi there, I'm Lucy Van Olden Barneveld. Welcome to our special Easter Monday broadcast of CBC Ottawa News. Well, there is a slight bit of optimism tonight in the province because of the manageable number of people who are being hospitalized with COVID-19. But at the same time, there is devastation and worry about what is happening in our long-term care homes and patients there. Ici, Daniel Bouchard, Gatineau, comme plusieurs villes au pays, lance un appel à l'aide à Ottawa. Déconfinement des terrains de camping en Ontario, des campeurs heureux, des propriétaires débordés. Témoigner sans crainte d'être pénalisé, Québec veut mettre fin à l'omerta dans le réseau de santé. Le lavage fréquent des mains aux primaires inquiète certains parents. Ce soir, au téléjournal. Qu'allons-nous faire de nos budgets? qui vont être dans le rouge. Juste les opérations policières depuis le début, là, c'est 350 000 de temps supplémentaires. Il faut que le fédéral euh, prenne un leadership, mais je m'attends également à ce que le provincial s'assoit autour de la table. Pas le droit d'être plus que cinq personnes sur site. 
Puis aujourd'hui, c'est la première journée, donc le, le monde sont bien excités de rentrer. On va commencer avec que ça ne rouvrirait pas. Là. J'avais hâte que ce soit ouvert. C'est sûr que c'est important de parler, mais c'est important de régler. On comprend là, qu'on a une situation extraordinaire. C'est la troisième fois que la ministre annonce la fin de l'Omerta. Pour moi, ça ne veut rien dire. J'ai vu ses mains, là, c'était, il était rendu en sang là, complètement. Là, j'ai trouvé ça assez, euh, assez grave. Ça ne m'étonne pas du tout. Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Gatineau est au nombre des villes canadiennes qui lancent un appel à l'aide en raison des contre-coups économiques liés à la COVID-19. Comme l'explique Christian Noël, en ces temps de pandémie, leurs revenus chutent et leurs dépenses explosent. Tonight, the RCMP released a detailed account of the horrific mass shooting in Nova Scotia. Before the first 911 call was received, there was an assault between the gunmen and a person known to him. A rampage that began, CTV News has learned, with an assault on the shooter's girlfriend. And a nation pauses to remember the 22 victims. Federal help announced for small businesses as some restaurants struggle to keep the doors open. Because of this, we lost our 90% of our sales. And Doug Ford says he'll table a plan to start slowly reopening the province next week. Bringing up baby. Can you make me feel very safe and uh, very protected in this in this sort of like unpredictable um, and uncertain time? With all visitors on hold, a quieter life as a new mom in the COVID era. And when the world feels a little dark, he finds a way to bring back color. Nova Scotia's heartbreak, the grief shared across Canada as we learn chilling new details of the mass murder that took 22 lives. Good evening, Graham is off tonight. We begin with breaking news and new information about the deadly attacks in Nova Scotia, a province already on edge, shaken today. The rate of growth day over day has stabilized with the outbreak of this virus having likely peaked in the community. And we are trending toward a best case scenario rather than a worst case scenario. Physical distancing measures are working according to the province, but health officials say we're not out of the woods yet. Dozens of people are now being treated at Windsor's Field Hospital. We'll hear from the daughter of a 92-year-old woman in one of those beds. She was one of the first to move into the space. I'm Chris Ensing. Thanks for joining us. Community spread of COVID-19 appears to have peaked earlier than expected, but public health officials say that they don't expect to ease restrictions yet. The big issue continues to be long-term care and retirement homes. It's a story that's playing out across the country. Roll up testing. We'll check out the new drive through COVID testing clinic. The parking lot of a quiet theater complex is pressed into service for drivers who want to know their health status. COVID differences. Words are exchanged between a hospital CEO and the public health officer. The medical officer accusing the hospital leader of overstepping his authority. And excessive force. Another night of looting and burning in Minneapolis triggered by the death of a black man in police custody. CTV News with Jim Crichton. Good evening. drive through COVID-19 testing has arrived in the city of Windsor, but is open to all residents of Windsor and Essex County who wish to be swabbed. This is Ontario pledges a massive expansion of tests in the next few weeks, though here at home, hundreds are anticipated to be administered over the course of the weekend. With more from the Silver City parking lot, here's CTV reporter Chris Campbell. Tonight on CTV News at 6. 
It's a week since George Floyd was killed by police in Minneapolis, and the unrest on the streets of the United States continues. Ottawa comes up with over $2 billion to help Canadian cities and towns that are struggling with their revenues due to the pandemic. I'm Ian Campbell in South Baymouth, where the Chichimon is running again, albeit only for essential services right now. Our crew is always excited to see people and have people come on board. Obviously, this year, we understand their focus is going to be on safety. In Timmins, a man out for a jog on a local trail has a dangerous encounter with an aggressive bear. I was lucky I, I was carrying some bear spray with me. I managed to get out of my pack. And our closing song tonight comes from the Wick-Wemacong Nursing Home on Manitoulin Island and a member of the staff who sings for the residents there. Dear old daddy, rest his soul, if my mama had he loved, she tried so very hard to fill his shoes. CTV News at 6 with Brendan Connor, Marina Moore, and weather with Will Aiello. Good Monday evening. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be checking in with Marina Moore in just a few minutes. But we begin with the latest on the protests and rioting in the U.S. following the police killing of a black man in Minneapolis a week ago. After a weekend of fires and unrest, there were calls today for calm. CTV's Joy Melvin is in Washington. Tonight, trying to get back to business. There aren't enough revenue dollars generated to make the model sustainable. Why some shop owners say new guidelines won't work. It's coming, it's inevitable. The numbers keep going down. Uh, we're gonna get the economy going. And the province's plans for the next phase of reopening. A Cambridge man accused of murder in the shooting death of a Toronto teen. The investigation and the others charged. Lineups. I'm happy we're getting back to normal. At the landfill. It's probably our busiest Monday that we'll have on record. What hundreds of people were waiting to drop off at the Waterloo Waste site. Good evening. We begin with developing news. Waterloo Regional Police have charged two people in the shooting death of Yafit Razin. The 19-year-old was shot and killed at a party just before Christmas last year. CTV's Jeff Pickle joins us from the Kitchener Police Detachment. Jeff, what do we know about these arrests? Tonight, identity issue. Why a health unit's plan to issue identity cards is a legal and ethical minefield. It's a voluntary project, and I think what every farm owner should do is voluntarily throw all of them in the garbage. Right to refuse. As parts of the economy prepare to reopen, workers express concern about being placed in danger. Plus, house calls how technology is being used to return the physicians to the age of the home visit. It saves us travel time and then also the risk of being exposed to um, other viruses. This is CTV News. Good evening, I'm Sasha Long. A decision by a local health unit to issue migrant workers identity cards is sparking controversy. Farmers in Norfolk County are being asked to fill out ID cards with the employee's name and their date of arrival. The card is deemed optional, but as CTV's Brent Lale tells us, the ID cards are raising many concerns. Tonight, Making progress against COVID-19. The measures we've taken so far are working. A look at the new models released by the federal government. Plus, preparing for a second wave. We know for sure that this is not over. RVH begins to increase its critical care capacity. And helping the homeless during the pandemic. We are creating safe spaces for people that are experiencing homelessness. What's being done to ensure their safety? CTV News with Candace Daniel. We are observing slowed epidemic growth 
and a leveling off of epidemic trajectories across most jurisdictions in Canada. Federal ministers release updated models for the COVID-19 outbreak, showing the spread of the virus has leveled off in some provinces, but warn we could have nearly 67,000 cases by next week. Good evening, everyone. As the number of daily COVID-19 cases appears to be descending across much of the country, Ontario saw a disheartening spike today after three straight days of declining numbers. Behind the glitz of the Toronto Auto Show, questions about the future of Ontario's auto industry and even a performance from Sting for GM workers in Oshawa. The curtain goes up on a Hamilton landmark brought back to life after a detailed restoration. And a heart of stone, how doctors at Hamilton Health Sciences chipped away at the calcium that had encased this man's heart, threatening his life. CHCH Evening News with Taz Boga and Phil Perkins. Good evening, Taz Boga's off tonight. I'm Phil Perkins. Thanks for joining us. And despite the law and efforts by police, the number of illegal pot shops in Hamilton continue to grow. Last week, there were 14 of them. Today, there are two more. As Dinah Weeks reports, police say they're doing everything they can, but are looking to the courts to impose much heavier penalties. Tonight, the Premier takes aim at the province's medical officers of health for a dip in COVID-19 testing rates. Relaxing restrictions. With summer on the horizon, cottagers are set to return to the Kawarthas. But how will COVID-19 concerns color the season? And marking the 75th anniversary of the liberation of the Netherlands. From Global Peterborough, this is Checks News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Premier Doug Ford is pointing the finger at some of the province's 34 regional medical officers of health. He's blaming them for a drop in COVID-19 tests. As Queen's Park Bureau Chief Travis Danraj reports, it's part of the reason Ford thinks the current health care system is broken and he's looking west for solutions. You're watching Global Durham. This is Global News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Tonight, vigil for a Queen student. Classmates and academics remember Amir Moradi, who died in the plane crash in Iran. Getting ready for Mother Nature's Mess, a weekend that brings heavy rain, freezing rain, strong winds, and snow. And Lost and Found, an organization that helps find missing pets, opens a chapter in the Quinty region. From Global Kingston, this is CKWS News at 6. Good evening. A vigil is underway in Kingston for one of the victims of this week's plane crash in Iran. A 21-year-old Queen's University student was among the 63 Canadians who died in the crash. Students and academics have packed the J-Duck Centre this hour to remember a life cut short. Jennifer Bassa joins us live from the campus with more on the somber ceremony. Jennifer. 